Hey guys, Jonathan here with Techno Buffalo with my first impressions of the brand new 13 inch Retina MacBook Pro. I'm going to give you guys a rundown, fill you in on the specs, but I solely and mainly want to talk about and focus on the Retina display because that is the whole reason we are here and that is the biggest feature of the new 13 inch Retina MacBook Pro. Now real quickly, this is the baseline 2.5 gigahertz Core i5 model, 8 gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes of flash storage. This configuration starts out at $1699 US, so you're going to get no arguments out of me. This is definitely a premium product and it is damn pricey. Now is it worth that premium price tag? That is still up in the air. I'll get a little more into that at the end of the video. But to put things in contrast, if you take the 13 inch non-retina MacBook Pro, you bump it up to the same 8 gigs of RAM, 128 gigabytes of flash storage, you're actually only paying about $200 extra dollars for a beautiful, beautiful display. Now, real quickly, just benchmarking the SSD, I got read and write speeds over 400 megabytes per second. And to put that in perspective, a typical 5400 RPM hard drive is gonna read and write around 60 megabytes per second. So there is a huge difference and that translates to much faster app loading times, insanely quick boot ups and shutdowns and overall just a much better user experience. The new 13 inch Retina MacBook Pro is also thinner. It's nearly a pound lighter than its non-Retina sibling. And real quickly, just giving you guys a tour of the ins and the outs. We have the MagSafe 2 connector. We have dual Thunderbolt ports, one of the two USB 3.0 ports, the headphone jack and dual microphones rounded up the left hand side. On the flip side, you can see gone is the optical drive, which translates to the thinner form factor and the lighter build. We then have the SD card slot, HDMI out, and the second USB 3.0 port. Now getting into the heart of the matter, the retina display, it is rocking a 2560 by 1600 resolution, which is four times the pixels as the current 13 inch non-retina MacBook Pro. Now, a lot of people will react and say, why the heck would I want a resolution that big on a screen that small? I'm not going to be able to see anything. Text is going to be small. Icons are going to be small, but it actually works a little different than you might think. So by default, that 2560 by 1600 looks like 1280 by 800. They render it at that ultra high resolution and then scale it down to fit in that screen real estate form factor. So there's actually four times the pixels in there and that's gonna result in insanely crisp text and a really, really vivid picture. Now where it gets really cool is you can actually scale it where you can see much more screen real estate than you normally could on the 13 inch non-retina MacBook Pro. You can bump it up to look like 1440 by 900 and that actually renders everything at 2880 by 1800, which is absolutely insane. And it actually even goes one step further. You can make it look like 1680 by 1050 and that actually renders everything at 3360 by 2100, which is absolutely ridiculous. It's pretty much impossible to see through a 1080p video, but I have full resolution screenshots down in the description below. You guys should check those out, click them, and see exactly how much screen real estate is actually smashed into this beautiful 13 inch display. So in terms of real world use, this is what web browsing looks like on the standard retina setting. This is what it looks like if you bump it up to 1440 by 900. So you can see there's a little extra screen real estate. And if you go even higher, this is how it looks if you render it at 1680 by 1050, you get even more screen real estate. Now, as far as performance goes, I was a little worried about not having dedicated graphics, but as a little mini stress test, here is Final Cut Pro 10 running, the rectangle with the video, that is full resolution 1080p, and you still have extra screen real estate around it. It's actually crazy. So I'm gonna keep that video playing in the background, just kind of move it around, do a little scrolling on the web browsing, and you can see it doesn't really lag at all. So the eight gigs of RAM kind of helps with multitasking. I really, really would like to see dedicated graphics, but for what it is, it actually runs pretty smooth. Now, as far as is this worth the price, uh, it's hard to say because I really feel the 15 inch Retina Mac Pro is a much better deal. If you actually bump this 13 inch model up to an i7 processor, the same 256 gigabytes of flash storage, it's actually the same price, but with the 15 inch, you get quad core CPU and dedicated graphics and obviously a bigger screen. And that leads me to believe that this is a premium product. It's not for everybody, but it is gonna pave the way for future products. Next year, I can see Retina possibly as a standard, but lower price points for sure and is also gonna pave the way for other laptops, non-Mac and Apple aside. So thank you guys for watching. If you guys did enjoy this video, make sure to go Buffalo style on that like button and also make sure to check out technobuffalo.com for the latest and greatest tech content along with the companion article so you guys can see the full resolution screenshots to this ridiculous, ridiculous display. This is John for Bulls signing out. I will see you guys later.